Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today we're going to be turning some dirt. My nephew out on the WD with the faster Harold. Good place for him to learn, right? Only about 400 tons to go. over there spreading money for me. I like it. In the middle of working this tractor yesterday, <clears throat> I was pulling that big disc through the field. It's wide open, about five mile an hour, five and a half mile an hour. Using all 155 horsepower, let's put it that way. Um, all at once, she just kind of stopped dead in her tracks, bang. And then took off a little bit, stopped dead in her tracks again, bang. Um, after I sat there for a little bit, contemplating the spline shaft that I thought that I had just ripped out of the power director and how fun that was going to be to fix um, went and investigated some and what had happened was this line right here runs up right here at this connector on the back side of that connector it ended up wearing through and cracking so this is one off of the parts that I happen to have as in the other tractor that I didn't overhaul last winter, probably more parts off of it. But it's becoming more and more a parts tractor, more than an overhaulable tractor. But um, we got that fixed. In order to do that, I had to take this saddle tank off. When I did that, this was just caked. It was just gross. So I washed it off pretty good. This here just stripped on that, so I ended up having to cut that off. I'm gonna have to weld another stud on there so that I can put the saddle tank back up in there, but that was kind of fun. And then uh, Tom had some issues with the manure spreader. I'll bring you up there and talk about that in a second. But um, once we got that fixed and got the fluid filled back up, it's good to go. No major problems. We had about two tenths of rain and overcast this morning, so as you can see, the fields are just a little too wet. Um, if it keeps a little later on, we're supposed to get some sun. And I've had sun beating on it for about an hour to make it so that I get back out there. But in the meantime, we're taking full advantage of the rain day. We're getting the plows cleaned up and greased up and uh, get them put away. Uh, maybe not put away, but cleaned up and greased up. So the sale never really likes to produce much for me. A lot of clay and stuff. And, um, we're gonna see what 10 tons per acre chicken manure does to kind of jumpstart the soil my crowd, my crows. Um, along with that green manure that we plowed down, I bet you I get a crop off of it this year. I tell you something, this 7045 is earning its keep already. Coming up this hill, I got the dip lock gauge. There ain't no more. That's all she's got, boys. How much coal is coming? Gauge isn't right, but it's 
like uh, 10 degrees hot. Basically, when this was on 210, my heat gauge was reading 195. So, 15 degrees. And that's where she was right.
2,500 discs behind me, 18 foot. Al's 2,500 discs behind him. That's 7060 chassis with a 301, and that is my 615 loader tractor. The only thing that you hear that you see that's not Alice Chalmers is that night side slinger. And if Alice made a side slinger, I'd have one, trust me. Series 417 and my 20 foot drag harrow. It's a pasture harrow, is what they consider it. It's got the chain mesh on it instead of the spikes. That, that thing is it's pretty awesome. I love that drag. Um, turning around over here, we can put some seeds to ground. You hear the engine uh, running there about 2100 RPM because we gotta keep it in PTO range to keep my pressure up on the air planter. To make sure that I'm, uh, I'm checking everything, just kind of making sure seed's good. I probably checked it, I don't know, 50 times. <laughs> Not really 50, but I'd say at least 10, 12 times I've been out of the tractor checking it. Everything is going really well, and uh, if everything checks out this time, I'm gonna finish this section. Um, these are short rows going up and down here, and then I'm gonna get out and check it again and hope everything is good there. Um, my brother was having problems with the chains and how to make him a how to use a white planter tutorial because uh, yeah obviously every time that you switch these sprockets you switch over sprockets you need to adjust these them sprockets right there which are the holder so that this cannot physically go see that's got a little bit but it can't go enough to where the chain can pop off. I don't know. I didn't even have to read the book to figure that out. Uh, he was having problems with this one here popping off of the idlers here, the tensioner, and I just went and got another spring and tightened that up and it seems to be working good too. So. Um, he's also having problems with it planting two seeds, which uh, the book says two and a half to five pounds of pressure. Right now I've got that gauge reading about a half a pound of pressure, and I've got a small seed, but it's, uh, it's planting about perfect. When you get down in here and look, coming around and the brushes are brushing them off, and over here, you're all, I'm only seeing one seed. So. I'm happy. Planner's planning. So as long as this weather holds out, stays south of us, it's supposed to be a 70% chance that missed us this morning, and I am very grateful. Not that we don't need the rain, but I need my seed in. And, um, there's a lot of rain coming in the 10-day forecast, so uh, this will give me a three-day window, and. See what happens, 70, 60's running good. As long as everything keeps going good for me. The seed will be in the ground.
All right, so the first 30 acres is done. My brother was having problems with population. He kept calling at a variable rate, basically making fun of my planner. And uh, I don't know what his problem was. And uh, he shouldn't have made fun of my planner because I wouldn't have made a shortcoming public like this. But uh, <laughs> I, plan I planted uh, 30 acres, 80,000 seeds per bag, put 16 bags in it. By the time I was done, I should have had about 64,000, 64,000, 68,000, to 68,000 seeds left. So about 12,000 less than a full bag. What do you guys think? Spread out among eight boxes. I bet there's right at a bag, or a little less than a bag. <laughs> dead on if you ask me uh, air was too high I don't know I got it set down to like a half a pound right now this one out here was planting every once in a while I, when I get out and look I'd see two seeds so I turned it down two more notches I quit doing that as you can see that's the same amount of seed in that one he said he had a problem with that one over planting all in all the first 30 acres went very smooth so I'm up here to fill up, go on to the next uh, about 30 acres of organic, and that'll be done. Move on to the non-GMO, or transitional ground. Well, my little quick fix on this thing is held together so far. He's got uh, 100,000 pounds, plus this load to spread yet, so... Uh, never did show you this the shaft was off alignment my brother had fixed it last year but didn't check the alignment of it i guess and it broke the knuckle again and then when that happened it come around bent the hell out of the shaft so they went over to the machine shop and, well bob did went over to the machine shop and uh built a new shaft for it so that's going good um as you can see this thing needs some help we actually lost a beater um uh, once we're done with this, it's going to get power washed and brought over to the machine shop to get fixed. I don't have much money in this thing at all, like at all, guys. And uh, I'm going to get it completely rebuilt and it probably, well, not probably, it's still going to be less than what a new spreader would cost me. So it's doing a good job. Bob's able to keep up pretty darn good, keeping ahead of me. Um, I've got 12 acres that's prepped and ready to go. And then he's going to hop in the disc and disc in the manure he spread on 18. And then I'm going to take over for him and he's going to spread this. So moving, we should have it all on the ground today as long as there's nothing breaks. Well, Evan, you called me the AC Plow Whisperer. Um, I guess I'm the White Planter Whisperer too because this thing is planning perfect. Um, you, I mean, you just can't, you can't get any closer to the population that I'm looking for. No. i tell you what, for a $1,200 planter, this thing is just amazing. It's one of the better investments of my farming career, for sure. So that's a trail of hydraulic oil that I followed all the way down from the shed. Uh, I mean, it was leaking terribly. So now we're here, we're looking over this tractor, and we could not find a leak. Period. There's just no no leak. No leaking. Uh, so yeah. Try to figure that out. Kind of confusing. We did find the overflow was leaking just a little bit of diesel fuel is what that is. I thought maybe I found it, but it was diesel fuel. And this right here is definitely hydraulic oil. But he just tightened that up, looks like he's got that fixed now, but I'm completely at a loss where this oil is coming from at this point.
May 21st. Hopefully I'll have all these crops on the ground today. Uh, I saw a lot of the old timers around here saying a bunch of corn in on June 15th to May 21st or May 20th. So we're waiting all around here. So anyway, I'm a day late. Hopefully I'm not a short. Everything's going good. Planters planting to the T. I can't ask for anything better. I've said that already. Uh, weird weather we're having. I'm in here without the air conditioning on today. It's like 56 degrees outside. We got down into the 40s last night. Very odd. So, you know, it's not like I lost very many heat degree days by not having it in the ground. A series of events that happened. And it's only 105 day corn. Uh, I kind of do that on purpose, that's what I always grow is right around in that day range. Uh, I guess the biggest thing about being so late is I won't have as much growth on the cover crop next year. That's, that's about it. So, <clears throat> like I said, this is, uh, everything's going good. You don't need any air conditioning today, which is odd. June 21st, my daughter's birthday. Usually everybody's like, hot as could be and we're having a pool party for my daughter's birthday today but bless her a little heart she understands that I'm working and I said well we'll have a birthday party for you next week I mean there and there was just okay I love you dad get your plant you gotta get the crops planted eight years old pretty proud moment for me you know I gotta do something special for her next weekend, but um, my uh, monitor down there doesn't work right. It tells me what two of them are playing. So you see me looking back all the time. I'm looking on these chains on all these boxes. Even though I haven't had any problems, you never know. At any point, like right now, bang, one could be off and I'm playing one less straw. Oh yeah, that's something that I've got to fix. Definitely. Just because it's kind of annoying. Uh, Bob's over there plowing. Plowing. Discus. So once I get done with this, I'm going to go drop, jump on the pasture harrow on the D17. And I'm going to uh, drag up to him. And then I'm going to take over and send him over to that other... 12 acre patch to spread the manure. So, as long as everything goes right, the seed's in the ground today, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. Exciting day. Old Bob has done damn good staying ahead of me with spreading the manure and disking the dragon. Um, I, had to, I had to run the drag when I went over 18 acres with it today. Other than that, he dissed 18 acres. Uh, that come over this. This is a 12 acre patch, and he spread the manure on this 12 acre patch. I got here just in time for him to finish up. Well, he would have finished up, but the tongue broke on the stupid disc. I'll show you guys that. I didn't show you guys the other one broke in a stupid other disc. Uh, just a, a, an unfortunate series of events. But. 12 acres left to plant. A little bit less now because first eight rows and eight rows behind me. So, both your fingers crossed. Almost there. Got all the seed in the ground now, but if this planting season could be summed up in one little clip, there it is. Just the moral of the story. Anything that could break, decided it wanted to break. I don't know. You can see it up here, it had been broke for a long time. Possibly even 
kind of repaired a little bit, but um, so anyway, that'll get fixed. It'll end up getting piece slid into it, some holes drilled, and a bunch of wells put on it. it. Is what it is. Also, that stupid leaking cylinder, but I'll bring you over and show you the other disc. So Bob was disking. He had about two acres left. Literally, on the whole farm, two acres. Notice the uh, double clevis situation going on here. The hitch decided to break on that one. Uh, this, this was Tom's excellent idea here. He said, what if I just put two clevises together on that? And I said, you know, I bet it'll be good enough to do the last two acres. It's going to be wobbly on the way home, and you can tell. He said about four mile an hour on the way home was all, all she had. But, you know, it's only not even a mile down the road. So, what the hey? got the job done and um, now I've got until this fall to get that fixed so that's good 7045 ran good without missing a beat as far as engine wise and transmission never did figure out where that trail of fluid went I mean we were playing with the hydraulics you know he was lifting them as I was looking and it, at this point it's just a complete mystery a complete mystery which is so odd that, that's leaking so bad we couldn't even find under the tractor where there was any leaks but it definitely came from this tractor it was not there when we went up there and on the way back i followed his trail um and i know that it wasn't coming from my tractor so uh, it is what it is i guess um at some point that's gonna happen out in the field i know it and i'm not gonna be moving again or something's gonna happen but anyway uh i'm gonna show you guys this pasture arrow here it's really nice um i I really prefer these over a drag. They really catch the contours of the ground, especially in the plowed ground where you might have a furrow that's got a little low spot. Them chains dip down into the furrow and um, break it up really good. I, I really like it. Needs a little bit of help. A couple of links come unhooked there, but kind of normal stuff. 17 ran good. This is probably like the last D17 on the planet that has factory pistons, factory size pistons. You can't even get this size overhaul kit anymore. Um, it's a complete fuel miser. Um, used about a full tank of gas, going over 100 acres with the drag there, so. Little fuel miser, power steering, comfy little tractor to run, really. Um, so, uh, other than that, now we get to uh, get plows cleaned up we just kind of put some motor oil on them so that they didn't get rusty and now we get to power wash them and get them all put away and power wash all the tractors and stuff we still got to plant sweet corn but that's really quick and I think this is probably where I'll end this video so I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one um, I'm excited to have all the seed in the ground and 2021 or 2022 season is uh Started off with a bang, that's for sure. I hope the rest of the season doesn't go this way. So I'd like to thank everybody for watching. And if you like this episode, give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing if you hadn't already. Um, next video will probably be some leftover plow footage. So check that out. Thanks for watching.